Hi, I'm Barb from Coach House Designs, and today I'm going to show you how to work your way through Christmas Bloom. Christmas Bloom is a 50 inch square wall quilt that has a rather large poinsettia applique in the center. Now this will pose a few challenges with respect to the large applique and placing it on a large background. I have worked out a few ways to make it a little bit easier, which are all set out in the pattern, but I'm gonna demo them to you today. The templates for the applique shapes are located in the pattern on pages five through 40. And they are arranged in groups of six. So if you go to the first uh, six pages, so that's page five, six, seven, eight, let's move these up a little bit, nine, and ten. These six pages all group together to form this set of applique shapes. So you need to join these pages together. So there's these little uh, fine lines here and you line those up. So what you would do is you would fold the paper back along the line on one side and line it up with the line on this side. And then you'll have a uh, perfect edge for tracing your template. So the first thing you have to do is, is join all these template pages into uh, six sets of six papers so that you can then trace out your templates on freezer paper. The first page of each of the groups has a diagram of how to uh, join the pages together so that if, they're, if it looks confusing, no need to worry because this will tell you uh, how the six pages should be joined together. The other thing um, to note on the template pages is underneath um, the letter of the template is the fabric that that template needs to be used with. So here is shape M. I've chosen this to demonstrate because it has this uh, interior corner here, um, just because that requires a little clipping and I can demonstrate that. But I've traced out the shape on freezer paper and then I have ironed the shiny side down onto uh, fabric five uh, is, is necessary for shape of large M. Now I have um, stickers on this just because as I was preparing the pattern, I renumbered them several times. Plus it makes it easier to see for the camera. So the first thing you need to do after is trim about a quarter of an inch max around the edge of the paper template. And then you turn the template over and then you're gonna use liquid basting glue. And I've got Quilter's Choice basting glue, which is readily available. Okay, the first thing you're gonna do is put a thin layer of glue right along the edge of the fabric. So this is quite a long edge here, but I'm gonna do the whole thing because when you're working with these large applique shapes, the turning is actually quite easy. And if you've got the whole edge prepared, you can get it done fairly quickly. So I've got my awl and I'm just going to turn, put my finger on it and use my awl to turn it over so that there's a fold and I use the corner or the edge of the template as a guide to, to show me where to fold. And as I turn it over with my awl, I press the edge down with my fingers, which will give it a nice um, finished edge for the applique shape, which will make it more durable. Now, you can use glue stick for this instead of liquid glue. The benefit to glue stick is that it doesn't uh, bleed through to the front of the fabric at all, so um, you won't see it on the front. Um, the downside of the glue stick is that it's a little harder to see where you have applied it because it goes uh, transparent fairly quickly and it, it tends to get a little bit more sticky on your fingers. 
as a result. So I find it a little bit messy uh, when applying, even though um, it does look better on the front. Now, when you turn this over and take the uh, freezer paper off, there may be a little basting glue showing on the front of the fabric. But once everything is completed and sewn to the background of the quilt top, you can dab that off with a little warm water. Okay, so I'm just going to do this edge now. Right to the point where it goes into this inside curve. Now you don't want to put tons of glue on because then there's more of a chance of it leaking through to the front. Okay, so I have a corner here, so I'm going to just turn that edge so it lines up with the point. And then we continue on. I did snip in here. There's a little bit of a curve here, so I, I cut, see how it's cut like that, um, just into the edge of the template, just to give it a little bit uh, more play when you're turning it to the back. And even though you're going around a outside curve, the fabric does um, fold over quite nicely. And if there's any a little extra, um, it can just be fold like here. There's a little bit of extra fabric. I just kind of squish it down with your finger and the glue will keep it in place. So then I get into this inside area and I have snipped into this edge here because that is where the edge of the template is. So that I can fold that back and then have it ready to start in the other direction. Now for this end piece here, there's a little uh, flap there where, it, where the edge is. So I'm just going to take my scissors and cut that off so that it lies flat at the end. And I'm going to continue along this side. I like this method because it is relatively quick to fix, or pardon me, to finish the edges. And then you don't have to um, worry about turning it as you're up applicating it down to the quilt top. Also, this method gives you the opportunity to finish your edges with machine. Uh, if it's if you want to have finished edges and not use a machine, uh, you would have to use um, a different, and you didn't want to use this form, you'd have to use a different um, hand applique method, light needle turn, which a lot of people find challenging, myself included. Okay, so I just turned it over at the end, and this part sticks out. And I'm just going to cut that off. Oops, let's fix that. The other part, the scissors are a bit dull. Okay, so there we go. There's the finished shape. Now, normally I would say take the uh, freezer paper off, but because there are uh, such a uh, number of different shapes and you only have one for each letter. We're going to keep the labels on until we've got it set up on the background. Okay, so I have completed all of the applique shapes and I have grouped them as set out in the instructions. So here we have shapes A to F and then shapes G to Q and then shapes R to Y, and shapes Z, and then the small letters A through P. So you can see I have laid out the background on a uh, flat surface, and I'm now going to refer to page three in the pattern. And you have this diagram here with some instructions on where to place these first group of applique shapes. Okay, so we're gonna start off with shape A and we're going to place 
this point here, which is point one, at seven and three quarters below the horizontal center and two and a quarter inches left of the vertical center. So the horizontal center is right here, so that's the center join, and this is the vertical center where you've joined the four patches together. Okay, so seven and three quarters below the horizontal. So that takes that to there. And then two and a quarter left of vertical. So I've just got the edge of my ruler along that seam line. So seven and three quarters is like that. And then two and a quarter is right here, right? Now, then it says point two, which is this side here, should be 12 and a half inches below the horizontal center and one in, and then this should be one and three eighths right of the vertical center. So I'm going to use this. So I need 12 and a half inches is like there and then one and three eighths okay and this is kind of confusing because there's a half inch here but one one three eighths will take us to here okay so this needs to just move there so that point there is now 12 and a half below horizontal center and one and three eighths right a vertical center. And then what I'm going to do is mark these points on my background using a erasable marker. Okay, here, this is the erasable marker that I like to use. It's a friction pen by Pilot and it, uh, you, when you write it on, um, it shows up really nicely, and then you can just remove it with a hot iron. Okay, so I'm just going to mark this point here, and then I'm going to mark over here so I know exactly where to place it when I take my freezer paper off. Okay, so you have two options um, in adhering this to the background, or securing it on the background before you sew. So you can either pin the whole thing all over or you can use your liquid basting glue and do little dots along here just to secure it in place. And then um, I would also put pins in the center just to make sure it doesn't move um, while you're sewing. So I am going to do that. Now I'm gonna use the glue and uh, tack it down and then I'm going to sew it on and then I'll be back. Okay, so I've sewn on uh, the three large leaves, the A, B, and C. So what I'm gonna do is now turn it over and you can see quite clearly where the stitching line is, um, where it's sewn to the background. So I wanna cut out the white background behind it. So I just get my scissors in there and just being very careful that I'm not cutting the front. Now when I did this, I used glue and pins. So some of the glue is going to be stuck. So all you need to do is just gently pull uh, the background away from the glue and then you can trim the background away a little bit closer and it, then it won't pull also on the front of the quilt. Uh, anyways, I will do that all the way around. Okay, so this is the back side of the quilt and I've trimmed away all of the uh, white background and parts of the borders uh, that came across there. So that is now, that bulk is all taken away and then it, lies nice and flat on the front. So um, I'm gonna trim away the other um, backs and then I will show you how to place the circles in the center.